What's the most uncomfortable question you can ask someone? Hey, uh, can we have a talk about your search history? Yeah, I hope nobody asks me that. Otherwise, it's over for me. It's done. Where's my hug? It's the creepy guy. Uh. Do you have a sister by chance? And why do you need to know? How come I wasn't invited? Yeah, that does kind of put people in an awkward spot. Oh, have you seen our toothbrush? No, and I don't want to actually. <laughs> Why are you so quiet? Look, sometimes you just don't need to say anything. I don't I don't have a need to speak, except for right now, I guess. Once back in college, when meeting my then girlfriend's parents for the first time, her dad greets me with a handshake. Nothing odd about that at all. Then in mid shake, he says, so you're the guy f***ing my daughter. I was genuinely rendered speechless. Hey dads, stop being weird. It knock it off. Are we still friends? While it's still uncomfortable, it might be a necessary question sometimes. Hello and welcome everybody back to Ask MK. My name's Brandon and today we're gonna look at some more questions, so let's jump in. What's the most badass thing you've accidentally said in the heat of the moment? I am a fourth grade teacher and one day I was up at the board and struggling to remember how to spell a particular word. I was trying to make light of it, telling the kids that sometimes adults need help with spelling too. One student replied, it it is because you were poorly educated. But don't worry, we are poorly educated too. Double whammy. Yikes, getting burned that hard by your own students? Oof. At work, project manager undercut and mismanaged a project so badly, they pushed getting minimum viable product out with the goal to roll out improvements later. Product released, they all patted themselves on the back and moved on. Then that minimum viable product broke. In a meeting we had with our directors about how it's so broken and the cost to fix it, etc., no cost too big big, unlimited manpower, etc., I asked, how come we couldn't afford to do it right, but we can afford to do it twice? Ooh, that had to feel good, getting to tell your boss, yeah, why are we just making things wrong? I'll never forget the moment a family walked into the local pub I work at while I was working. This big king of the grill, bald, alpha, patriarch dad type and his wife and kids came through. I said, welcome, where would you like to sit? And he snapped back, well, a table would be nice. And without missing a beat at all, I replied, actually, we usually sit on the chairs here. I'll never forget the satisfaction of that moment or the look on his face. <laughs> my uncles were b***ing about my dad, so I walked into the conversation and told them it wasn't polite to talk about people behind their backs. My uncle turned to me and said I shouldn't interrupt when the men are speaking, and completely out of character, I replied, I don't see any men in here. Boy, did I get some s*** that day, but that's how I knew I won that exchange. Working retail, a Karen once told me she hoped I die. I was so into work mode that I blankly responded, I mean, we all die. That's not much of a threat. Maybe it was my lack of intimidation or blank stare, but that really shut her up. On that note, we should really normalize letting customer service workers, you know, yell back at customers. High school teachers of Reddit, what is the one thing that you want your students to know that you'd never tell them in person? I think what you learn in the other classes is mostly useless rubbish. The things you're supposed to do to learn it is boring and ineffective, and the way our schools are organized is archaic and not fit for humans, much less kids. Your parents are literally the worst part of my job. Yes, I put you in a group with the kid you have a crush on intentionally. I'm stuck here with you 180 days a year. I want to see some drama. Stop wearing your furry tail. Everyone is uncomfortable. I'm no longer a teacher, but I remember several days that I felt lazy and wanted to give the class the day off. I never did because I knew the teacher's pet would rat me out. Sometimes even the teachers don't like the teacher's pet. I'd let you get away with so much more if you were actually a decent person who treated others with kindness and respect. A-holes rarely get the benefit of the doubt or indifference. You accidentally put in an hour more community service than needed. Now you have to do one hour of community disservice. What do you do? Go around and turn off the automatic doors at grocery stores. It's easier than you think. That makes me wonder what they do in their free time. Out of order signs on all public bathrooms. You know you only try to use them because it's an emergency. Spend an hour going to gas stations and putting bags on handles. Now nobody knows what works and what doesn't. You know, I can't say for sure, but I feel like somebody did that last time I tried getting gas. I'ma go flex tape some parked cars together. Why are you punishing these people? They'll never get their cars unstuck. Stand at a crosswalk for a busy intersection and yell at open car windows that they have a flat. I guess that one sounds kinda good, but they are lying. Lying, breaking leaf bags and spreading them back on people's yards. All right, honey, go get the leaf blower. 
No, a rake is not gonna fix this one. What are red flags in a friendship most people brush away? I mean, first of all, that Robin guy won't leave me alone. He's always calling me up trying to kiss me, and I... Like, I'm, it, I love the guy, but come on. When you hang out with them, it feels like you're diffusing a bomb when there's nothing going on right then. Friends that only care to talk about their own success and aren't genuinely happy for you and yours unless it amounts to less than their own. Really jealous and possessive friends. I'm a jealous person by nature, and even though my jealousy flares up when I see my friends hanging out with other people, I would never let them know. Why? Because I don't want them to feel bad about doing the things they love. E.g. having a social life outside my little world. Continually feeling like you want to say something but should hold your tongue. You see you got a private message from them and your gut reaction is to start getting nervous or anxious. What is it this time? Friends who gossip excessively. If they're talking about other people, chances are they're talking about you. What was the highest waste of money that you don't regret? Just shy of $20,000 to go to Antarctica traveling solo, small cruise ship. More than I've spent on every other vacation I've taken combined. Was one of the best trips of my life. It also gave me enough space and clarity to realize how toxic my ex was to me so that I could find the strength to leave not long after I got back. I'll always want to go back to Antarctica. The inner peace I found there changed my life. My litter robot. Yes, I spent $600 on a cat sh but my house never smells. I don't have to scoop litter, and I only have to empty the drawer once a week. Definitely worth it to me. My fiance and I dropped close to three grand on a kitchen table and coffee table from Carolina Game Tables, the kind where you take the top off and have a board game space underneath. They're comparatively plain compared to some you see online. No lights or USB ports, no cubbies, drawers, or cup holders, just really solidly built solid wood tables where the top comes off. But hot damn, they've been awesome. We use them all the time. One unexpected use was Legos. I got a Lego set and started building it on the coffee table, and when I needed to stop for the night, I just put the lid on until I was ready to continue. Don't regret a cent. I spent too much money on a big treadmill for a very small apartment, but I've ran 15 to 25 kilometers on it every week for the past several years, and it's been incredibly helpful both physically and mentally. Artwork. Can I always afford it? No. But my walls are full of original, 90% local art. They make me happy to look at, and I'm sure I made the artist happy too. Board games. They are expensive, but they bring me joy. And it's the little things in life, really. You die, and the first thing you see in the afterlife are three buttons. Next level, spectate, and restart. Which one do you press, and why? I would install a mod to play as Luigi. If you can't come back and play as Luigi, then what has been the point? Spectate. I would love to be able to see in depth how other people live their lives because it's essentially living another life as you can follow anyone around as much as you want while not actually having to go through the negative aspects of said life. Shit. No button to send me back to the main menu and switch some settings around? Damn, all these people saying next level. That's one hell of a gamble here. No new game plus? I want to keep my gear and experience. If I could restart knowing what I knew then, then restart. If not, then next level. Would you take a 50-50 chance at $5 million or death? Why or why not? I would, definitely. I'm already guaranteed death, but no way do I realistically have a shot at $5 million. Let it ride, baby. Is the death painless? If so, yes. If we're speaking about a painless, instant death, it's a win-win scenario. I'll be rich or I'll receive a better death than my natural one. Question. How fast would I die if I lost? Would it be instant or would I have to contemplate my mortality before it happened? I love how you can see the difference of people who answer here. No, I'm worth more than five million or I love my family too much to risk it. Then you go to the people like, Fuck yeah, death! Yeah! Imagine that I do not accept and the next day I get hit by a car. I am invalid and my bill is $5 million. Alright buddy, no need to be so pessimistic about this. What's the most effed up thing someone has told you about themselves after barely getting to know them? Visited a coffee shop for the first time on holiday. Barista commented on my tattoos. I said thank you. She told me she's not allowed to get tattoos, but she cuts herself to enjoy the pain, and that's nearly the same thing. I found a different coffee shop for the rest of my holiday. Good God! Don't do that! Chatted with a huge middle-aged dude in a bar once, who after about two minutes told me that he had been in prison for bashing his dad's head in with a hand 
hammer. His dad used to beat his mom, and one day he had enough of it. Uh, yeah, that's a little uncomfy, but I guess good on him? I made the unfortunate mistake of inviting my old neighbor over when we were having a party. He had like five gins in my kitchen and confessed to an unsolved murder in Nunavut, Canada. He's in jail. Wow, way to be a snitch. I guess I shouldn't say that about a murderer, huh? <laughs> Moved to a neighborhood not too long ago, first person I meet was an older woman in her 50s. She told me all about her drug use and how sometimes she ended up outside naked and asked if I would help her back inside and put clothes on her. This was all in five minutes of saying hello. Bartender for a while. I'm here to meet a man to cheat on my husband with. Once me and my friend met a dude at a party and his icebreaker was, crack prices in the Bronx are up lately. I, I guess he's keeping up on his knowledge, I don't know. What was a huge trend that everyone forgot about. Flash mobs. Maybe. I don't know. Do people still do that? That era during the 2000s slash early 2010s when every popular song got an Alvin and the Chipmunks cover. Still can't believe we survived that. Farmville. All of my aunts let their young children create Facebook accounts just so they could send themselves gifts through them. My Facebook feed used to be full of pictures of everyone's farms. The California raisins were freaking huge for about a year like 1988 or 1989. I heard it through the grapevine, as performed by the Raisins, was on the radio, and Hardee's did a promotional thing with their kids' meals where you got these cool little figurines of the members playing their respective instruments. I had quite a few of them. In the 1950s, there was a fad that was teens seeing how many of themselves they could stuff into a phone booth. So I guess lockers were just practice at the time. When I started college in the mid-2000s, almost everyone had a Blackberry, the Crackberry era. We'd be messaging each other on BBM all the time and all that jazz. By senior year, those phones weren't even a passing thought on our minds. It's impressive how quickly it changed. Jelly shoes. Using 20 to 30 tiny butterfly clips to accent hairstyles. Those little clips did nothing but become hazards once dropped on the floor. Waterbeds. Watching media from the 80s and you'd think they were in every home. What do you think is scarier? The idea that we are alone in the universe or the idea that we aren't? Why? I think about the ruins of ancient civilizations on other planets and how absolutely fascinating it would be to explore them. That we are alone. Given how massive the universe is in space and time and the idea that Earth is the only place where any life form exists is unsettling. Everyone seems to be assuming that other life means humanoid or intelligent. To me, it just means any life form. Carbon-based or made of elements unknown to our galaxy. There has to be something else. Well, the idea that we will never know. There are lots of paradoxes and problems regarding aliens. If they are there at all, have they developed technology advanced enough to create electromagnetic signals? And if yes, why we haven't seen any signs throughout the visible universe? Our civilization can be easily spotted for everyone in a 110 light year radius with radio telescopes, and we cannot spot anything in billions of light years around? The idea that we're alone, because it would imply that our existence is winning the astronomical lottery and this is all we're trying to do with it. The idea we aren't, because anytime two entities come into contact, there is some kind of power struggle, and the loser is either subjugated or eliminated. The only chance for peace is a coincidental situation where both parties are at the same power, roughly speaking, to where the struggle is known to be too damaging to all parties such that it should be avoided. Mathematically, there should be life. I think it would be far more frightening that we are alone. What are some psychology experiments with interesting results. White rats and black rats were raised separately without seeing each other. When a black rat was placed in the white rat's cage, the other rats ostracized him. When white and black rats are raised together and a new black rat is placed in a cage, the white rats accept him. So basically, rats are racist, unless raised to accept differences. Not entirely sure it fits into the category, but the Rosenhan experiment. 13 people feigned mental illness to get into mental hospitals and all were admitted with different diagnosis. They then assumed their normal personalities, but to be released, they all had to admit they were mentally ill. There was a second part where a hospital challenged Rosenhan to send multiple fake patients to the hospital, and they would rate their patients on a scale of whether they think they were faking. They identified many possible fakers, but Rosenhan, in fact, 
hadn't sent anyone. The Monopoly study by Paul Piff. He basically brought two strangers into the lab together and had them play a game of Monopoly together. He randomly assigned one participant to start the game with twice as much money than the other, and that participant also got to roll both dice to get around the board, i.e. the other participant started with half the money and could only roll one dice. At the end of the game, when he asked the participant who started with more money why he won the game, they would chalk it up to their excellent strategy and gamesmanship rather than the fact that they had started the game with way more resources. It says a lot about how we deal with being born into a privileged state. I'm a huge fan of Milgram's Small World Experiment. It is more sociology than psychology, but I still think it's really cool. Milgram sends out 160 letters containing the name and address of a stockbroker in Boston to people in Omaha, Nebraska. They had to send it to someone they thought would get the letter closer, but they couldn't mail it directly to the stockbroker. Interestingly, most people that sent on the letter sent it on to the same group of people on the fifth degree. It only took six people, hence the six degrees of separation, to arrive on average. It shows how interconnected our world is, even before the internet, which is happy to think about. Reconsolidation. When you retrieve a memory from your long-term memory, it is susceptible to being manipulated. This can lead to memories being totally changed from the source. This is why eyewitness accounts cannot be fully seen as true. This knowledge is also being used to help people with PTSD by changing the negative memories they have of their particular trauma. What was normal to have in 2010, but not 2020? Shake weights. Ah, uh, but it feels so good when, when, you're, when you're pumping it and then it shoots the cooling liquid at you. It's so cool. Boots with the fur. But did she get low? Cell phones with a physical keyboard. Burn CDs that you wrote on top of. Rage comics. Those ones I think are still around, they've just evolved. 1,000 bitcoins. God, to be a man with a thousand bitcoins right now. Things with mustaches on them. I remember I had a pair of shades that had mustaches on them and I thought they were so pimpin'. Also galaxy theme everything. What's an unfun fact? In 2014, the CDC once found a smallpox sample that they had lost and didn't even know it. It was just laying around in some random storeroom. Oh, that, that makes me feel safe. Around 1.5 million people die from TB annually, which is a disease consistently treatable by antibiotics in almost all cases. Fatal familial insomnia exists. It's a rare, incurable prionic brain disease that progressively destroys your brain's ability to sleep. Eventually, you stop sleeping altogether, go insane, have seizures, and die. When your skin becomes red from spending too much time under the sunlight, it's basically because your skin cells are committing suicide suicide to avoid becoming cancerous. Depends on what you find as fun, but King Henry VIII exploded in his coffin while the grave was being dug. The mess was cleared up by stray dogs. Only one in every thousand sea turtles born ever make it to adulthood. Dead people can get goosebumps. Well, of course, I'm sure all dead people love R.L. Stein. Scallops have eyes, around 200 under the shelly lip. Oh, I've seen a picture of it. It's kind of creepy. Girls with super long across acrylic nails. How do you wipe your butt without hurting yourself? Same way they put contacts in. Very carefully with the pads of the finger rather than the nails. I find the most difficult part is flushing the toilet if it's a push button. I don't get acrylics anymore, but when I did, man, the finger yoga I had to pull off just to get enough down force to push it all the way. You use the three seashells, duh. I don't know what this means. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Take some toilet paper, wrap it perpendicular to your fingers, covering up the nails. Wipe like normal. It's weird, but you can do basically anything but rock climbing. What is the strangest mystery that is still unsolved? The lost A-bomb off the coast of America, which the US government said not to worry about in the 50s and tried to cover up, was dumped in the ocean in an aviation accident and it's still lost to this day. 100 times more powerful than what we dropped in Japan. Oh, I love of how lazy our government is. An unsolved murder of an entire family in Japan, which to this day remains unsolved despite DNA evidence indicating the ancestry of the killer, a sand sample left by the killer, which was traced back to the California desert near Edwards Air Force Base, and even sesame seeds in the killer's stool. Nah, but it couldn't be him. This dude got lost in the catacombs and they found camera footage of his journey, but at some point he drops the camera and just starts to run. As far as I know, nobody is 
found out WTF happened to him. Perhaps not the absolute strangest, but in March of 2020, the Windows market share for the long discontinued Windows XP skyrocketed by about 10% in China. This spike in Windows XP use for just one month is for unknown reasons. Some people think the Chinese government could have been looking for security flaws in the operating system to take advantage of. After all, lots of sensitive government equipment still runs on Windows XP. How are we letting that slide? Like, come on. Three lighthouse workers with impeccable mustaches traveled to a remote island on December 7, 1900 for a lighthouse shift that should have lasted for two weeks. When a boat arrived to pick them up, they were gone. No trace of the bodies, and the lighthouse was strangely locked. Not only was the setting normal, meal ready to be served, but there was no fire in the fireplace and the clock stopped. One of the men kept a log in a diary, and he said that the seas were rough one day, but when monitored, it was actually calm. No one knows what what happened to them. One of them boys must have been caught sparring with a gull. And that is the end of my very funny lighthouse reference. How a lower class English woman became an important Egyptian scholar based on her memories from her supposed past life as an ancient Egyptian priestess. She actually described a garden in an ancient temple that was later discovered matching her description and in the location she said it was. She knew things that hadn't been published before and had been worshipping ancient Egyptian gods from the age of three. Alright, my name's been Brandon once again, and the video's over!